And we're back! The bootleg queens are here to work. And how do you know that we have strong work ethics? We change our wig but kept the same makeup. Same makeup. And that's what we do best! Bootlegging! How are you, Jackie? Girl, I am here. Both of us are wearing bangs, which means no lace. What are you talking about? Bootleg opinions. Oh my god, we have to get into it because this is part two of the finale. Oh, finale. So we're getting. Oh, I can't even talk. I have this hair in my face. It is part two of the premiere. Mm-hmm. So they double released premiere. two episodes at once. So I have a question for you. Mama you. Mama you. <laughs> Do you <laughs> think they released both of these episodes at once because they're nervous that the first episode wasn't strong enough on its own? You know what? Now that you mentioned it, because you did talk about how the first episode, the runway, weren't that strong. The only times they really do double premieres is if they have a split cast. Rarely do we have Drag Race do a double premiere if they're not correlating with each other. But it also has to do with how they distribute the episodes time-wise. Because sometimes they can order, like, an XYZ amount of episodes, Uh but then they have to be wrapped up by a certain time. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, Paramount Plus is a whole mess anyway, because it's like, they drop the episodes at like midnight on a Thursday. I keep saying to anyone I meet who works at Paramount, drop the episodes at a specific time. Yeah. Like, drop them at like Friday at 7, Friday at 8, whatever it is, like yeah. pick a time. Do it Thursday, I don't care. Pick a time, like that people are actually awake, mm-hmm. drop it, so then we can all watch at the same time and then talk about it online. But what do you think? Do you think that they dropped it because of that reason? That's my question. You know me, I like to ask questions and not offer opinions. <laughs> you has a show, it's called Bootleg Opinions. My show, it's called Bootleg Questions. <laughs> now, what do you think of this episode? Because it is the ball. What do you look for in a ball? Uh, I look for, obviously, the creativity of the look they make there. I think what's nice about this episode is rather than doing unconventional materials, they did conventional materials but with the painting twist, which is nice. I want to see that they make something that doesn't look like they made it that day. It stands up to par with all of the amazing expensive designer gowns and things that they bring. That's what I'm looking for. True, true, true. Now, the top two for this episode is Plastic Tiara as well as Gottmik. I do think Got Milk won the lip sync. That song is so campy, and she was giving it to me in the face in the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Plastique moved beautifully, but she was giving me, like, dancer, not lip synker. Yeah, she gave almost like George's in the last episode. A little bit too much for what the song called for. Yeah, it would have worked if she would have given me more in the face. Yes. She was kind of giving me, like, pretty smiley face and then pretty dancing. If she would have done, like, a campy face for the pretty dancing, I think she would have done... Or even not even campy, just like really expressive. Mm. I think she was not especially as expressive. <laughs> it could also have just been a song she wasn't that familiar with. Like, Got Make, I'm assuming, watches Beetlejuice a lot. And so the song, so you know, most like people our age know that song from Beetlejuice. So I think that that's a song she probably has known a long time. Whereas I have a feeling maybe Plastique learned it today. Okay. True, true, true. And maybe she will learn some Beyonce songs too, because she doesn't know who Beyonce is. So the first category is monochromatic colors. Did they just do this on season 16? Did they? They just did. They okay, just give did. me they some examples. Do, they do the rainbow one where you try to pick a color. Do you remember this? They just did it. Okay, give me one runway that someone wears so that I can... Like Safira did all blue, Nymphia did all yellow. Oh. Yeah, so I, I'm just confused why this was happening right again. Actually, I don't because those two queens wear those same two colors the entire season. For what did Plain was- Jane wear? Plain Jane did the green, she did the emerald outfit that was the nude with the emerald. Oh, okay, fine. So this yeah. feel like it's the same thing. So I think that the trick is, especially if it's a darker color, to still be able to see the detail. So we did an all black runway on season 12, and I made the mistake of doing a lot of like lace that you couldn't see on the camera. Okay, cool. For a monochromatic look, I think that since it's one color, it has to be interesting through other things, whether if it's theme, texture, styles, because everybody can come out in a color, but it has to tell a story. But anyway, let's start. We first up have Miss Angeria Paris Van Wuggles. Although it is a beautiful look, what I would have done is do a little bit something more with the makeup so that it reads a little bit more spacey, alien. It is green. I also didn't think that the tool maybe went with the rest of it, which felt a little more like latexy fetishy, and then there's this giant tool train. Yeah, I don't know how much time they had to change between the runways, so it could have been originally she intended to do that. I think they do because um, got me actually changed her makeup. So. Oh. Yeah, because at first I was like, why aren't the, some of the queens changing their makeup to match the look? And then I realized some of the queens like got make actually change their makeup. So, I think they do. So I think the execution part of why she's wearing this color is lost, though it is a good look itself. Next up is Chanel. It's a great, beautiful look. This great is drag. fuchsia look with I the hair. 
with the makeup, with the outfit, it's all one monochromatic look, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't know why she's wearing it. She's giving me, like, Vegas showgirl. I love it. This is Vegas showgirl to you? Like, not maybe showgirl, maybe Vegas, like, um, like, uh, like a Vegas high class, like an old school, old timey in Vegas. I okay, I would have liked it if she, I don't know, had, like, feathers as a fan to give us more than just a dress. Or some, like, I don't know, pink paint spewing through something. I love it! Give us something with a story. That's I love it. Me. I love the little feather details that are coming out of the cages. I think that's beautiful. Okay, next up we have Miss Roxy Andrews. The hair and the dress match perfectly, which I do love. And then I love how sexy her body looks. There's a couple too many pieces for me kind of moving around. I would have maybe removed one rope element, but I liked it. I don't like it. I think it works from the face up and waist down, but around the body area, it's just a lot of things going on. It got lost. Yeah, I think one thing removed would have helped. Yeah, but it is monochromatic, though. It is monochromatic, and the hair matches. Next up is Miss Gottmik wearing an original Versace. And although it is Versace, it's giving me Grace Jones with the makeup, with the hood, the purple. I think she looks magnificent in this. And this is giving me her walking down the runway of Paris. Yeah, I like this look a lot. My yeah. partner who was watching this didn't love it because he wanted it to be a little bit more draggy as opposed mm -hmm. to high fashion. I think that's always the question, like, right? We thought the same thing in the last episode as well. Like, what is drag versus the fashion runway? To me, this is actually a good mixture of the two because, mm -hmm. you know, the corset element kind of makes it more drag to me. But it also looks like it could be in a real runway show. I think that her makeup, really dark, that's what made it draggy. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Next up, we have Nina West. I don't understand the very slow-moving little curtain that lifted into the hat. I didn't understand it. Okay. Or even if it was just like a long fringe that she parted, I think could have been interesting. Mm -hmm. The like little tab in front of her face it reminded me of like, you know, those tabs you put on like a folder or like a, yeah. a notebook is yeah, what like reminded a bookmark, me of, right? like a bookmark. Yeah. That's the part that didn't make sense to me. And like, that's what I was fixated on the entire runway. It's somewhere between like a jellyfish and like Hello Dolly. For me, it's giving me the Club Kid days with inspirations of Lee Bowery's because of the silhouette, how she's fully covered from head to toe, from the hat to the arms to the legs. I don't mind the reveal, that small piece. I just wish that there was more of an impact after she does the reveal. Maybe like really like dramatic for makeup, yeah. paint all over, something. But overall, I think that this is a very strong look. It tells me exactly what type of look that she's serving, and it has a purpose of why she's wearing the monochromatic look. It is, and it is telling a story. And I guess if I think of it as a club kid, I do like it more. Yeah. I guess I was thinking more in like in her world of campiness. I wasn't sure like if it was campy enough. Yeah. Next up is Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, serving you Monsieur Visage. Um, at first glance, I got the reference right away. The green dress, the, the hair. gray hair with this part in the middle. Although it is a very simplistic green dress, I think it's effective in the way that it sold the story. And she looked beautiful. Yeah. I actually love Vanjie with this kind of big hair. I feel like Vanjie does these a little bit smaller hair, at least so far this season. And I love her with the big hair. I think it's so fun. It's just her big personality to me. Yeah. So I kind of loved it. I loved the look head to toe. I thought it was like pretty, funny, drag. You know what I mean? It was all those things. Yeah, it served the runway of monochromatic and why she did it. So, oh, you see, you don't need necessarily like exaggerated silhouettes or anything. It just, just served a purpose. Next up, we have Miss Plastique Tiara. This is obviously beautiful. I guess to what you're talking about earlier, we are critiquing Roxy's look with just the same color. Like this is an even more impactful use of negative space with the yeah. color versus yeah. Roxy's. How can you not love this? It's just so beautiful. I think this is beautiful too. It mixes the sex and kink and her culture together. Yeah. But I would like for her to add some stones to it. Maybe sequin red instead of just solid mm. red. But it is a beautiful look. Next up is George's and she's born to do drag and I am born to... Quit drag. Yeah, she finally got it right. And Miss George is over here is serving you the devil's lettuce. Is it an exaggerated silhouette? No, but I think that the, for the monochromatic runway, it serves its purpose. We see the green leaf on the hair, we see the green leaves on the tatas and the hoo-hahs, and I think that she brought the entire monochromatic look from head to toe, and it's effective. Whereas I feel like with Chanel's, it wasn't effective. She was just wearing a dress. That's where I'm getting with this. I guess so. To me, Chanel's I thought was much more beautiful. When I look at this, this also has my pet peeve in it, which is that the hair and the outfit are two very different tones. The outfit is a little bit of a mintier green and the hair is a little more of a limey green. Even though the silhouettes work, 
it's very her, and obviously she loves it, and she loves to talk about weed and poppers, and I'm ready to see something else. Okay, cool. So, but do you like the look? I like the look. Okay, cool. I like the look. From that runway, my favorite look, I think, is plastic. Mine is Nina West. Oh! Yeah! Next category is, they have to do looks inspired by art. Drag becomes art. I wanted, like, commentary on art. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for something interesting, like, from a point of view. I want the art to be reflected on the outfit, because sometimes in previous seasons, we have seen queens just literally print the art onto the fabric and, and wear it in dress. see that this season. And I just think that that's such an easy way out, although you might have spent money printing that art onto that fabric, but you're just literally giving us art on a piece of fabric onto a generic dress. So let's see how these queens will incorporate the art into the app. We first up have Miss Angeria Pears Van Michaels, and I feel like it's just a dress that she has color blocks with the red, with the yellow, with the black. And I think that to make the look a little bit more brought together with the original painting is to have the fur that she's holding to have color blocking too, so that it's not just all black, but maybe like black, blue, yellow, red. Yeah, I mean, when I saw it right away, I knew it was Mondrian print, so that was... Yeah. <laughs> Let me try that again. Hmm. Right away, when, right, bleh, I can't even talk. You know that this is not making the cut, right? You, yeah. you see bootleg like, opinions, we emphasize on sh like this. You're gonna get a close up. <laughs> Great. Right away. When I saw it right away, I knew it was Mondrian print. So that was. Yeah. <coughs> Let me try that again. Hmm. Right away, when, right, bleh, I can't even talk. You know that this is not making the cut, right? You, yeah. You when I saw it, I knew it was Mondrian, which is good. I don't actually understand why the fur was there. So it was a very mod dress. I don't yeah. think mod girl would carry fur around. So that was, I guess, my critique is like, because Mondrian is a 60s print and then I've a 60s dress. Like, that to me made sense. But it was simple. But it was pretty. But it was simple. I think even if she does like the hair with like stripes of those colors as well, mm -hmm. it would have brought the whole look together to give a much more stronger impact. Overall, I would say that it's safe, it's effective, but yeah. not wowing. Next up is Miss Chanel, honey, and this is what I like to call incorporating the art into the outfit. She comes out in this blue outfit with the ocean and the waves all over the outfit, and her hair is inspired by the waves, too. This is how you incorporate the drag this into is the drag. art. Chanel yeah. is really bringing it this season. I Tell just her can't. she's beautiful. Chanel, you are beautiful. Chanel, you're beautiful. I can't wait to see whenever she turns to the corner on the runway. She's just so everything to me. Yeah, I love it. I love her. Love it. Well done. Beautiful dress. So beautiful, beautiful. interpretation. She brought it to life. Next up, we have Miss Roxy Andrews. I hate that she printed the artwork. Because I actually think the cloth that's melted on her body is kind of cool. And I think the makeup with the little mustache is cool nod to Salvador Dali. And I even like the little fascinator. It's the printed fabric that really misses the mark for me. It's literally like, oh, I knew that she like went online, uploaded that artwork and printed it and had it sent to her designer. I think this look would be stronger if she would have cut the skirt entirely and just had it been a short dress. Cause on the sleeves, you can't quite tell exactly what it is in terms of the printed fabric, but on the skirt, it's just like, I printed this artwork and now it's my skirt. So I would have actually just cut the skirt. I would have probably put the clock on the dress at the bottom or I actually don't mind the silhouette of the dress because this dress is still reflected on the era that this artist created these artworks. Does that make sense? I guess. Like Salvador Dali was like, yeah, like into the 20th century too. Yeah. So the fact that the outfit is reflecting upon what people around that generation or era will wear, I don't mind it. Not Whereas me. with Angeric, it's just literally it's not an H&M me. dress. It's not for me. I like it. I like it. Even though it's the printed material? The clock, I think she added it on, the clock. No, the clock, but look at the skirt. Oh, yeah. The skirt again and tell me okay. like the skirt. The dress, I don't mind, because we still have the element of the clock that she made. Do you know what I mean? And the clock over here. Cut the skirt. Just do the drama sleeves and make it about the clock on the bottom. That is my bootleg opinion. Next up is Got Mix, serving you... Who's this artist? The Scream! Van Gogh. Serving you Van Gogh from top to bottom. This is Van Gogh? Did Van Gogh do the Scream? I think he did. He did phone. Starry Light 2. No, Starry Night 2. Um, this entire outfit, it is hand printed. Alexa, crystallized. who painted the screen? And crystallized with stones, baby. And the trail in the back. Beautiful. This is stunning. And I bet in person it was even more gorgeous. Do you know stones read better in real life than they do on camera? Mm -hmm. Like, I bet in real life this was absolutely blinding. Yeah. I wanted her to, like, wear this to events because it needs to be seen in real life. Yeah. The way stones catch light in real life versus on camera is so different. Yeah, and she made it a little bit more fashion-y and edgy with, like, almost a half a face skinny where she had yeah. the top covered. 
and just her face exposed too. Everything is covered, it. including her hands. Very beautifully done. Shall we ask Alexa one more time? Sorry, I was talking. Alexa, who painted the scream? Edvard Munch is the artist who painted the scream in 1893. Yeah, it's not Bingo. Okay, next up we have Nina West serving Tom of Finland. I like that she chose Tom of Finland, and I thought the hair was very Tom of Finland. The outfit to me didn't read Tom of Finland, but also Tom of Finland never did anything feminine. It was all masculine. So I guess it would be hard to do any sort of dress that felt like Tom of Finland. So I guess like, I would have actually probably cut a skirt and this would have been an opportunity to do a bodysuit, right? And maybe have yeah, like harnesses everywhere. That's what I would have done for Tom. I think the proportions are off here. I think the wig is way too small for her. She needs shoulder pads, something. And I feel like the legs should have been nude. And I also wouldn't mind her going the route of being a little bit more mask and femme together, gender bending. Wear pants instead. Do pants. Pants, yeah. Harnesses, like you mentioned, straps, something. This was reading more. You know who I'm talking about from Matilda? Oh, trench bowl. Yeah, it's reading a little bit more that with the outfit then. I wonder if her original intention for this runway was to do uh, like a gray makeup. Okay. And then when oh. she realized it was a ball, she was like, I don't have time to do like a proper gray makeup. Because then it would have maybe worked a little. Because all, oh. all of Tom and Finland stuff is black and white. Oh yeah, the gray makeup would have worked a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this was kind of a miss for me, unfortunately. It missed the mark too, but I like the reference. Next up is Miss Plastic Tiara. She's serving you a black outfit with polka dots all over because the artist is mostly known for doing polka dots. I love this look actually because it's reading the red carpet for a big event and then she has the polka dots circling around her going all the way up. Kind of reminds me of, was, is it the Guggenheim Museum that has the stairs like that? I think so. Yeah. I like about this, this is the draggiest she's looked so far this season. Because she's covered with sunglasses, so you can't but her makeup. But also the silhouette and the hair are even like more exaggerated yeah. than normal, so that's yeah. very cool. And I like that the sunglasses have eyelashes on them. Like, yeah. And the, the lips are way more exaggerated than she usually does. Like all of it reads more drag to me, but still beautiful. So like this is exactly what I want from Plastique every week. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Plastique, everything she does is so beautiful, but I would love it to be a little draggier. And this to me is like, Perfect. And the polka dots are super impactful too because the dress is black and the yellow just like really pops. pops. Yeah, great job, Plastique. Next up we have Georges and this look was fine. To me it was giving like Dick Tracy, Carmen San Diego, but fine. Georges is a performing queen. She is a girl from Nashville who knows how to get up on that stage and keep those kids entertained till 2 a.m. I don't think Georges is a runway queen. I don't think I'm a runway queen. So it's like, I like seeing these things from Georges, but I want something, at least one look from her that really gives full, big drag. You know, this is all stars. Is she from Nashville? I thought she was from Texas. Oh, I think, but she used to work at Play Nashville. Did she? I think she did. Hmm. Yeah, she was a playmate. Okay, um, about this look, I think it's effective. I think it's effective because the category asks for drag and art to put together. I think that it's great that she has the green hair, the pop of lavender. I feel like she's the one queen that's the closest to doing all-stars since her season. That is also true. Her mm -hmm. and Angeria, same season. I think this one is more effective than Angeria's, which was just literally a shirt dress. All right, and that was the second category. Who is your favorite look from the category? My favorite look is hands down plastic. Mine is Chanel, actually. Oh, I like Chanel's too. Yeah, so I guess the Asians are running the second category because Chanel is inspired by a Japanese artist and Plastique is Asian. That's true. And it's AAPI Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. And the last category is art that was painted in the workroom, also known as paintball. Woo! Paintball. Shall we get started? Have you ever played paintball? No, and Me I either. don't care. I don't want to. I don't like, you know, getting hurt and stuff. Or yeah, not shooting, like, I don't want to have, like, things shot at me. Yeah. Uh, first up, we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels. I can't believe she made this. I like this a lot. I like the silhouette. I like the drama. I think the fit is beautiful. And I love the color on her. I think that the color is beautiful, but I kind of wish that there were still some parts of the outfit that we can see that it's paint. Do you know what I mean? Because it just seems like this fabric came like this and she sewed it. I think it looks beautiful. Because the challenge is supposed to be paint, you know what I mean? And a few notes, the hair I would have done to the side because she does have a one shoulder. And I don't think that the pieces that she has around the waist area are curved correctly. What I would have done to trick the eye is just keep holding them so okay. that we can tell. But it's a safe look. I like it. Pretty. Next up we have Chanel. Okay, I will say, I think we know she's not a sewing queen. She just glued a bunch of stuff to a corset. I do like that the color is really interesting. I don't know. 
it wasn't for me. Obviously, the painting itself is actually beautifully done. You can tell based on this look, she doesn't have any skill in terms of sewing garment. I think what's missing in this look is the back of the sheer fabric was too short. I think if she exaggerated, made it longer, like mm -hmm. compared to here. Longer train. But the fact that they were not at the right length, I think that's why it looks like a miss. But overall, I enjoyed the look. She I like it fine. Especially, I mean, look. Chanel's literally been some of my favorite runways so far this season. Yeah, I think that the fact that she changed her makeup to match the entire look with the yellow, with the orange, it's with the beautiful. blue. It's beautiful. And the hair kind of correlates with the whole look too. It's almost very mythical, very paradise, very kind of alienating too. So yeah, I, see I like alien. this look. I see alien. You know, like the petals, the leaves in two? See ya. Just the back could have been longer. Next up, we have Roxy Andrews. I will say this. This is a cool look. So to your thing earlier, you can tell that it's paint. It also is very her. Mm -hmm. It reads Roxy. Like, this is, like, power CEO. So I love it on all those fronts. I think this is a safe look. It's beautiful. It's well done. A hat would have been cool. Bring it the look together. Yeah, it could have been a cool hat. Yeah, a hat. A beret, maybe. Next up is Miss Gottmik serving you Satan's secretary. Ah! We got the black and white at the top. Her signature hair colors. Definitely, it is painted off with the red. Very bloody, very hell, very goth, very Satan. And then we see the straps that's tied around the slit that's going up. And then we also see symbols very Ooh. beautifully done. I think it's very cool. It's very her. It does look like something she made in the workroom. I will say that. It doesn't look like she brought this from home. Her runway caliber is so high. Yeah. That this obviously is like not as perfect as everything else. But it is nice. And I can see why she won. Because when you look at all three of her looks, they're all great. And this does look like paint. Yeah, and it completed the challenge, you know. It reads as paint, and it's her signature. Your turn, Nina. Next up, we have Nina West serving literal paintball drama. Like, she's just covered in paintballs. Um, I think everyone, including Nina West, knows that this look was a mess. Yeah, the hair was too small. It's just a dress. Yeah, she even, like, shrugged on the runway when Michelle was like, I think this is not as good as the others. And she went... You know, like she was like, "Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, this is not good." Um, what could we have done to make it better? I think a different concept. I think if you did the paintball on the skirt, maybe had them a lot by the waist, and then it kind of like they got a little thinner on the skirt, and just had it been like part of a, a skirt moment, maybe a longer skirt. Non-elimination episode, so I think she just was not worried about it. <laughs> Look, if I'm going on a non-elimination season of All Stars, you have to like pick your bets as to what you think you're going to do good at. Yep. If I'm Nina West or I'm myself, I'm not walking in thinking I'm going to win the ball. Yeah, I and think I don't think she walked into this episode thinking she was going to win. She was like, I'm going to have fun, I and I think she had fun. I think what I would have done is to gradient the colors a little bit more, so it doesn't seem like dot red, dot blue, dot yellow, dot you know. I would have gradiated the colors a little bit more. I just want to I give be going dot. That. But you know what I mean, right? It literally just looks like, okay, green, blue, yellow, pink, red. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It looks a little bit more artsy. Arts and crafts. Than fiesta. Than drag. Yeah. Next up is Miss Vanjie serving you the colors of Miss Puerto Rico. The judges mentioned that the outfit wasn't really fitting on her. I didn't mind it. I didn't really notice it. I thought that it kind of served the purpose she of her. She worked it a lot. Yeah, I thought she was doing that on purpose. Like, you know, you know, in salsa dancing, you kind of... Yeah. Ruffled she the outfit a lot. Start. What I would have done is maybe a sash so that she's Miss Puerto Rico or a crown or something like that to give the runway a little bit more. But overall, I like the look. Again, like Nina, I'm assuming Vanjie walked in thinking she wasn't going to win this episode. You know what I mean? And I think in a non-elimination season, you just kind of have to have fun with it. And I think she was like, Puerto Rico's fun. I like dancing and I'm going to look pretty. Her hair, makeup are beautiful. Yeah. Next up, we have Plastique Tiara. This is really cool. This is beautiful. Serving you Met Gala over the top. Giving you roll pay. The outfit was stoned and painted to match her tatas and hoo-hahs. And then the back was her ass thing. I know she must have taken this back to the hotel room at night and worked on it more. Yeah. The detail is amazing. The outfit is black and white, but the pop of the pink at the top just really gave it that accents of colors. If she would have told me she brought this from home, I would have believed her. Like, yes, yeah. beautiful. It fits the challenge on every level in the sense that it looks painted. You know what I mean? It looks yeah. painted and it looks beautiful. Yeah. Last up is George is serving us a two-piece. The bra, she did not make. That's something she had. Uh, the bolero jacket, it's, you know, it's, it's something she wrapped around herself. But you can't tell that it's paint, though. It's just a little bit simplistic. I wish you could have done something with the bra. 
Mm-hmm. Something. Some painting, something, something. Even if she made like a purse in those two colors with the white as well as the blue, I would have liked it better. I'll say this. If you're Georges, you're also probably not walking into this season thinking you're going to win the ball. Like this was obviously from the beginning going to be Chanel versus Got Mick versus Plastique. Or Roxy. I can see Roxy in there too. Maybe. Maybe Roxy. Yeah, but you know, if you're not one of those four queens, the four other girls are probably like, I'm just going to have fun with these looks. Yeah, and I think she's going to have fun with this look. She definitely did. And that's one of the things. It, here's the question for you in the audience. Do you like that? Because I feel like the girls are having more fun, but then do they care as much in terms of how well they do in these challenges? Yeah, and that was my main concern too. But anyway, who is your favorite look from this runway? Oh, from this runway, it's Plastique with the pink. Same. Plastic Tiara. Congrats, Plastique. Well, thank you, Jackie Cox, for coming on today to talk about the ball. Mama, you, we did it. Mm-hmm. And I have two balls if you're ever looking for some balls. Bye! Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.